Good morning. I don't think I've ever been to a venue so early. Um, I was told I got to be there early to see my mentor. Uh, my mentor is Derek Newson. I'm not sure if you know him, but he is a bit of a legend. So it is round three of the Ivy House Winter League. Um, it's been really, 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 really cold the last few days. Freaking hell, the gates aren't even open yet. Maybe even too early. I'm not sure what time Karen starts her breakfast. Don't want to wake her up yet. So for those who don't know, this is peg 35 on Moran. Now, it is definitely a peg that I would have chose on paper to be drawn. So I was happy, but obviously been in the corner, everyone walks past it. You could be concerned that it could push the fish out. But as I've said, on paper and in theory, this is definitely one of the pegs you want to draw. Um, but it could be a peg where you won't catch, simple as. Is obviously you've got no fish coming from your right. They've got to come from your left. And the water is clear because obviously it's been, it's been so cold. So I started bobbing. And I was very relieved to catch after five minutes. Um, I had a slight indication. Mick B forgot his landing net, bless him. He's walked around. He said, oh, that was a little dink. And I was like, yeah. And then nothing materialized. Lifted it up. Moved it maybe, I don't know two yards to my right, and um, whatchamacallit, it? it's pretty much gone straight under. So obviously they just like took it on the settle. Um, so this has popped up six inches off deck, um, eight mil piece of bread, fished 018 main line to an 040 nook length, because I know there's a few biggins in here and I would have scaled down quite promptly, but the last thing I wanted to do is hook something decent and obviously lose it. Um, so I'm glad I did and a bit of tree. I'm glad I um I'm good with landing nets, aren't I? I'm glad I um had some bit better gear on. So I've got soft elastic, so I've got a a 1.6 hybrid elastic, so some Mavis stuff, just through a short kit. So I felt that I could hook anything in this lake and I'd like to think I'd get it out. So very relieved, so quite a good start. Or well, very good start. Um my prediction was £12 was going to win the lake. Um, Dwayne next to me predicted, I think, 28 I think he predicted. I can't remember now. Um, and then I've had to move slightly to my right again. And I know what's going to happen. I didn't want to start in the corner. Because I was worried I'd push the fish out. So I've started slightly to my left. Obviously not too close to my left. Because otherwise I'd be in someone else's peg. But So I started to the left of a big clump. And I'm going to work my way into the corner. And I worry once I've gone into the corner. Then I'm going to push the fish out. Um, so And then if I do that. Then I'll probably end up catching nothing. So this is again quite a good fish. Again taking time. So still on a. A decent rig so the same rig 018 to 014 16 oak 8 mil punch nothing on it no special additive or anything just warburton's straight up a tin actually no it's not warburton's it's a co-op toasty loaf which maybe i found just as good i'll probably get criticized for that someone will tell me it's not and yeah i know there's water on my lens this is on a gopro so this isn't on my normal camera I didn't want to risk my normal camera, to be honest, because it's like ridiculously cold, especially yesterday, and also it's raining. So I just figured it'd be better to just use a GoPro. And to be fair, I think the quality is not too bad on a GoPro. I know a few anglers use GoPros for their fishing blogs and stuff. So then my next plan on bread fades, which is going to, I've got a lighter rig, which I could dob maggots on. So that's my next thing in my armory. Also, I've soaked up some pellets because I got here so early with, with Derek. So I soaked up a few fishery micros, a few four mils, got half a tin of corn. And I mixed up a bit of Hinder's uh, nut 365 mix just in case I need to introduce a tiny, tiniest bit of ground bait with a few like micros. Or sometimes you could do it with even pink ears because there's a lot of little roach in here. 
um, which they didn't actually feed. To be fair, I was quite surprised. I think the water is just ridiculously cold. I'm amazed it's not froze, to be honest. Uh, I didn't catch over ground bait. I didn't catch over pellets. I did introduce food in the end. And that was the right thing to do, but I just caught best on maggots. Just tapping in a few maggots and just been patient, to be honest. I did catch a few fish near the death in front of me. Well, slightly to my left, if anything. Uh, the peg's only 14 and a half meters wide. Well, I did have a 16 meter extension just in case I wanted to go to the to my left as much as possible, but I didn't feel I needed to do that to be honest. Um, and obviously just taking my time with the fish, obviously, because you know it's going to be a rock hard match. So the last thing you do is put a bit hard and it comes off. So they're a good stamp for this lake, Moran. So I've been very lucky. So this is dobbing on maggots, and you can see now that I've just moved more and more to my right. The bite probably wasn't the cleanest. And I've like figured already that yeah, this is unfortunately foul looked. So you're just gonna take your time. So it's a small mirror, probably about maybe a pound and a half. Looking to my left, no one's catching. Dwayne's had two. And bless him, that was the only two he had. Never one. Jew book one, which I think was swimming, like he said, swimming through the peg. And unfortunately that's come off. Magoo struggled. Um and he's very good at dobbing on this venue, especially on Kingfisher. Uh, Carl was third with eight pound and then gary knight was second with 10 pound and i had 26 pound so lucky to get a few bites caught a few um f1s on maggots this ain't shown in the video because the battery ran out and i didn't want to get up and change batteries or anything yeah i think he just got caught in a little bit of a twig there so because the water's so clear, you can see it underneath. As in you can see it probably about, I don't know, 18 inches down. So, and I know it's, it looks like it's hooked like in the belly. So I've tried to be clever and scoop it and failed miserably. Okay. So there's the leaderboard after three rounds. So thanks to Ken Rayner for putting it up. Um, you, I understand you can drop a result. I'm not 100% sure about that, so that would change quite a lot of things. So there is a dropper to be added potentially. So this is halfway stage. Three more rounds left. I'm on uh, Willow next. So Gary Knight, so far, fair play to him, has had uh, two wins and a second. So that's very good. So fair play to him. He's in my section. So we're on Willow. Willow in two weeks. I'm not sure how that's going to fish. It'll be all on the weather. And you'll definitely need to be quite lucky, to be fair. I'd like to think peg 34 would be an absolute screamer of a draw. But you never know, because peg 19 won it um, yesterday, which is one peg that I th definitely thought would not win it. So, yeah, anyway, stay safe and uh, definitely uh, stay warm. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.